with a McDonald's Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop, back from the Thanksgiving holiday with Justin Martindale. Welcome back to the Juicy Scoop studios. It is so good to be back. I love it. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I had the best. Good. Gorgeous weather here in L.A., we went out on our boat. You know, uh, mm-hmm. Peter is the skipper. Mm-hmm. My son was home from college. Lots of just easy, fun, staying at home type of cash. And yourself? I had a wonderful Thanksgiving with my friend's family um, in beautiful Orange County. I decided to wear a sweater because it's 85 degrees outside <laughs> today. <laughs> I figured this would be like my my December look, you know? When and you look adorable. Thank you. you it's look Calvin adorable. Klein. Thank you. And, uh, uh, yeah, it was great. Went to the Century City Mall yesterday. Oh, that's the mall that we talked about. That is just like a kick in it. Now, um, were you at all scared to go to an L.A. or any California-based mall being what's happening with the grab-and-goes? This is where people have gone um, with crowbars. Anywhere from 8 to 80 people at a time will break into a store wearing mm-hmm. hoodies and their COVID masks. At least they're being safe. Um, they're wearing their masks. And then they they take steal bags, jewelry. Um, they've also gone to a Home Depot to steal the crowbars. Oh. They've also gone to a Hot Wings on Melrose. Because, mm. you know, you, I always work up an appetite when I'm shopping. Or stealing. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, my friend showed up yesterday with a new, I had never seen it, but like a Louis Vuitton like carry-on bag. And I said to her, I go, oh, that's pretty. Did you happen to get it Wednesday night at the Westfield Mall on Topanga around 7.30 p.m.? <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> I was not scared. I mean, I didn't even think about it. because. Uh, but you know me. I love living my life in fear. So I... I went there. I was more afraid of like an actual flash mob with music. Oh, you know, God, when you everyone knows when they... everyone knows the same song. That scares me more than an actual like <sighs> multiple people burglary. Do you remember that yes. show with Howie Mandel where was a flash mob would happen well, and and like there'd be actors and then people would like twirl around and start to dance and Yeah. There was nothing more terrifying. And it was always like it was always like some like song that just sucks. Like that one song that's like, I love it. I push my car into a bridge. And everyone just knows the dance. And then I'm like, get me out of here, you know? Oh, I don't care. Uh, I would just be so uh, bummed if someone asked me to be part of it because you think it's fun, but same thing with like um now when people get married and their groomsmen have to like take dance classes for six weeks uh-huh. and or whatever and and just so they can get a viral thing on TikTok or on Facebook. And I'm like, God, can't can I just go to the wedding and have a cocktail? Like I would the few times that people have asked me to sing at a wedding, uh. I which I regret, I'm so stressed until I'm done. Same with thing like if I'm doing stand-up, I can't drink with you in the day and have fun. I gotta perform that night. So if I was going to a wedding and I or I knew I had to do a flash mob mm-hmm. and act like I was just a patron reading a book and then throw it down. And like yeah. And then twirl just get around, into it. And then God forbid you screw up. You're the groomsman who yeah. screwed up. Done. Done. See, Never. I would I would rather watch a robbery <laughs> happening. To Bruno Mars, I think I'm going to marry you. And I'd be like, oh, well, this is a delightful robbery in progress. Oh, this uh, is cute. <laughs> Rather than the actual flash mob. Uh, uh, uh. What I do want to say about that, because I have uh, posted some stuff just on stories, just so people know, because I think it is so terrible. Mm-hmm. And I want to say why what people are not saying, because you hear things, people, oh, well, they're insured, or it's a big label, or, you know, reason that they're doing it is because, um, well, sometimes they say they have real guns and stuff, but... um, No one asks. You shouldn't ask if that's a real gun or not. Right. (laughs) Is that real? But it's going to, you know, they're like, oh, well, you know, we've the laws in California are so low for theft now that you won't get in trouble if you do it, and I think that's horrible, and they should, you know, not be doing it. Anyway, but what about the people that... Is like, no, mom, I know grandma's dying. I'm not going to get on a plane and spend the five days with you because finally retail's happening again. And I'm a top salesperson at Nordstrom. Mm -hmm. We just finally got all the ship from, you know, Long Beach finally came in. We have all the bags. I've called all my best customers. They're coming in. And I'm going to really make some great money on commission this weekend at the Woodland Hills Nordstrom's. Okay. Yeah. Now, no fucking inventory. 
and they still have to work there. No one thinks about that person. They're just like, oh, whatever, you know. No, it was freaking scary, and it's awful. And, you know, I've I've talked about the horrific fashions at Nordstrom's in the past two years, the yeah, prairie dresses. Yeah. Unfortunately, those are on the third floor. Mm. So those are still safe collecting dust. Where's the men's in Nordstrom? Is that the... F- it's the bottom it's floor, the bottom. but it is... Like, so they went in, and actually, that the bottom, that is where I think they went in, is that where the you go into the men's first, Yeah. and then I don't want to give them any tips, but whatever. Don't give any tips, okay. yeah. But I wonder if now going forward, like maybe after holidays, department stores will be like, let's move the jewelry and the bags and the easy, stealable stuff to the third floor, put the prairie dresses... And yes. the less expensive stuff on the bottom store, but floor for the robbers. But I could see why retail wise, why you why they designed it the way it is with the purses and the jewelry and stuff. Because that's what men go and buy. Men aren't going to go up to the third floor. They're going to get their own clothes. They're going to buy the purse for the wife. They got in and out, in and out. So I think they've designed it like that. Mm-hmm. Shoes are on the bottom floor yeah, oftentimes. Shoes are always on the bottom, yeah. Which are easy to grab and go. Along and with, those are expensive. Yeah, horrible. Have you been to a- Shoe department lately? It's all like Balenciaga and all these designer shoes that are well, like thousands it, of dollars. So I'm like, uh, where's like the sad shoes? <laughs> like, that's and maybe like, maybe people felt they had shoes. to grab and go the Gucci stuff so that they could be dressed to go to Lady Gaga's movie mm-hmm. and feel really part of the part interactive of, yes. experience yes. of the Gucci in the name of the father, the son, and the house of Gucci. I like mean, I've seen God. that commercial so many times. I have not seen it. Uh-uh. It is two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, good. And I've heard... It's almost as long as Titanic. Perfect. Except I don't think it's as good. No. A lot of people are saying they are just they were a little bored. Some of it was slow. Mm-hmm. I'm Tom not Ford, hearing... Tom Ford what? said... Tom Ford was like, was this supposed to be a farce? <gasps> I love Tom Ford shade. Yeah. And uh, then you said you read the, fam- the family's not happy about Ooh. it. The family was like, um, this isn't like how we wanted to be depicted. And I'm like... Well, no shit. But if the one woman really did, the it, one that she's playing, hi, tried to hire a man to kill the guy playing Adam Driver. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. That is something we should know about That's you. something we should know about. But but the Gucci family. Oh. Um, in the name of the father, was the son, saying, and the house of Gucci. Was saying there was other actual prominent women in our in our family that did good. They just, we just, you know, kind of focused on this one story. But I mean, my God, you're going to well, have... what do you want? It was already... I know. Too, it was already, they said it was boring. Do you think I we would have wanted to see the girl stowing the buttons? I mean, come on. I just want to see the fashion. That's all I want. I right. want to see like ski lift, Lady Gaga. Well, I think you do see a lot of it. I don't know. So we haven't seen it, yeah. but I'll probably see it within the next week. I know. I have to go to one of those movie theaters where I can order the wine and like the real food. Oh, that's like the AMC. Yeah, that's well, there's the a cine- Cineopolis. What? <laughs> in is I don't know if I say it right. It's uh in Agora. That's is, the one I like. What's it called? West, like Cineopol like uh, Cin like C I N N No E P O L I S. That's the that's, name of the That's a COVID variant movie. <laughs> that's what that is. <laughs> speaking of which, just enjoy your life why you well, can because the new one's coming. Okay, speaking <laughs> of Thanksgiving, Kanye West um went to a like LA mission. And people didn't even know he was there, you know, with COVID well, masks and whatever. And then he got the mic and he started to speak. Damn it. And just, you know, some people that, you know, this might be their only meal that week just wanted to be grateful <laughs> that they were blessed with Kanye's rant. Okay. So he decided he wants to, he was like trying to win back Kim. Mm. Um I'm going to read some of it, but the part I also heard that was not included in this article by um, page six was he also said that um, God would wants them to be together as a family. You and mean if, him? Him and Kim. Okay. And if they got back together, that would give a lot of other families hope mm. to make it work. Meanwhile, though, he's dating this drop-dead gorgeous, at least they told us he was, model who's like a you know influencer like everybody else. Yeah. She's dating uh, Pete Davidson, of course. And so anyway, he said some of the things he said is um, all I think about every day is how I how to get my family back together and how I heal the pain that I've caused. Um, I take accountability for my actions. And there's a video of it. um, And what appears to be a choir singing as he candidly spoke about his past mistakes on this Thanksgiving. I'm so thankful for family, my blood family, my fans and our haters. Um, 
He went on to say a handful of misactions led to the family's downfall. He credited he credited alcohol consumption. I didn't know he had a problem with alcohol. I didn't either. Manic episodes, his ego and temper. I would drink to take the stress away, to knock the edge off. Drinking affected my health and the health of people around me, he confessed, because I already had a hair trigger temper. And that just heightened it. I didn't know he had an ego or a temper either. I I know. (laughs) That's wild. Um, Being a good wife, she just wanted to protect me and our family. I I made me and my family a target by not aligning with Hollywood's political stance. And that was hard on her marriage. She had mentioned that she it was a big mistake to wear the Make America hat again. Make America great again hat. She didn't want him to wear the hat. He admit that it was not good. And then he said, um, uh, then he went on medication, but then when he went off the medication, it left him susceptible to other episodes. Yeah, that's how that happens. And um, again, he said, you know, they didn't approve his support of Donald Trump and to wear the hat. And she didn't like me wearing the red hat. And um, let's see. Let's see. And I was embarrassed. I embarrassed my wife in the way that I presented the information about our family during the one and okay, so then I think he's talking about when he said about the North stuff the that North stuff. The, he did a rant about how he at one time he contemplated Kim getting an oh, abortion. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, I think that yeah. was like her final straw. That's what but, every daughter um, wants to hear their dad say. Yeah. Oh my God. And then, uh, anyway, mm. he, the prayer addressed some serious topics. And then, but he also made a, a, he also had a sense of humor, and he cracked a few jokes at times. He at one point he called himself very, 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 very attractive. <laughs> Meanwhile, the homeless are like, "Can we just eat our turkey? Can you shut up? We live on the street. We don't want to hear you. I'm trying. This is the one time I'm going to have stuffing this year. Good." God. And later joked that his religious arrogance was like he just got me some Jesus. At the Gucci store with a stimulus check. Wow. That's what, that's what homeless people want to hear, too, on Thanksgiving. Got a lot of Gucci press this weekend. Good God, seriously. Gucci was stolen. People didn't like the Gucci movie. He referenced Gucci with a stimulus check. Meanwhile, Kardashian has been spending more one-on-one time with her new beau, Pete Davidson. And the two were spotted grabbing breakfast at the Beverly Hills Hotel after recently holding hands. Anyway, there you go. What? Okay, so now she's with skinny white tattooed big dick Pete Davidson. Yeah. Of course, Courtney is with skinny yeah. tattooed white, hopefully big dick. I don't think we know the evidence. It's big. And so the question is. And then Megan Fox with Machine Gun Kelly. Right. So and whole, she's not a Kardashian daughter, but her face is morphed into a Kardashian. Right. But this is the trend. Yes. Tattooed is, skinny white guys. Is the other girls now, do we see, uh, you know, Chloe's back and on with back on and off with Tristan. I don't know if a surrogate is pregnant with their second child or not. Mm-hmm. We don't really see her out with him or anything. Do Does the whole family move towards that? abandon the black athlete musician mm-hmm. types. Yeah. And then, so who is going to be Chloe's prediction? Who could Chloe date that could fit in with the skinny white tattooed style? They could be musicians, comedians, just skinny white tattooed. Skinny white tattooed, I mean. Type that has money and success. Who can we find? He needs to be tall. Chloe's tall. I was going to say Harry tall, Styles, but, but Harry Styles wouldn't go for... No, he's, no, no and he's with no, somebody, and he's not the type. He's, no, no, no. He's British and proper. Oh, Post Malone. Post Malone. Post Malone would be a great choice yeah. for Chloe. And then who do we want to see with Kendall? Um, Kendall would probably just date some tattoo artist on Sunset. Yeah, she's always... Yeah. She's like, I don't need the, the famous person. So she's going so. with someone that's like was like a fourth lead on um, L.A. Inc. Ink Masters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, he's really, really <laughs> profound in the in the ink industry. Yeah. Yes. Or something like that. Like Kat Von D's BFF. Well... I or think- no, here we go. Dave Navarro. Dave Ooh. Navarro would be a good one because he's got like... He's got that like rock and roll... Vibe. He's kind of s- short, though. I know, but that's what, you know, mm. lifts are for. No, she needs a tall she, one. Yeah, because she's tall, too, huh? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to go for Post Malone. Um, Jack Skellington would be good, too. Who's that? He's the lead in Nightmare Before Christmas. 
<laughs> well, he's a cartoon. Yes. He's like, he could be tatted up, right? He looks like a, a Kardashian would date him. By the way, speak, what's this? What's this? Well, by the way, shitty TV. Last night, I made my son get in my bed mm-hmm. above the covers. No one freak out. Okay. And like, we watched. On purpose. We watched this like the dorkiest families compete with their Christmas lights against each other. Just oh. good, clean family fun. Uh-huh. And one family did the nightmare before Christmas. With their lights? With, like, they built all this stuff. But there was this other lady that I really felt it it was the prettiest, but I didn't watch the whole thing. Anyway, um, then these this one couple that were adult Disney fans, mm-hmm. you know, the kind that go to Disneyland. Oh, I know several. And yeah. yet childless and just, mm-hmm. yeah, continuing on. They did their house like um, Disneyland but then it was like the house across the street was just such a sad house. And I was like, this, I don't know. Like, what is the background behind all of these this weirdness people? But listen, they seemed happy. Okay, so we don't know who, Ke- okay, we think Kendall's someone with Ink Master. I want you guys to uh, think about it mm-hmm. and who that you think that they we should go. And then, I'm sorry if we're going to go full, you know, one and one for all. Not that I want to break up with Chris and Corey, but who is an older? He doesn't have to be older. Her boyfriend's only fifth. I don't even think who Chris is. Corey's only like forty two, but yeah. I'm saying she could still go for something. But if we wanted to find an older, hot, tattooed, white, skinny delight for Chris. I would like to hear some suggestions about that. Maybe like an 80s rocker. Maybe like a sexy. Like Sebastian Bach. Yeah. Let's do it. (laughs) Okay. Anyway. Johnny Rotten. (laughs) You know. And then Courtney will go, now who really is the I mean, trendsetter? Poor who Courtney. Who really is? Can she just have one just fucking thing? Just one moment. Can she have one fucking thing? One moment. I feel so bad for her. I mean, here's the thing. If we want to set up Kendall and Kylie, we could give them the Island Boy twins. Yes. That could be kind of fun. Hold on. Stop yes, the presses. Yes. That's what's happening. Uh-huh. Island Boy twins for them, <laughs> even though they're not twins, but they're sisters. But a lot of people at one yeah. time thought they are twins. Mm-hmm. Now, listen. Kylie is pregnant with her second child with Travis Scott, who, you know, hasn't had a great go at it. But he did enjoy himself <laughs> yeah. golfing um, in Palm Desert this past Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, good for Not him. Not that he shouldn't be able to golf, he, but he was golfing. So it's probably good for his mental still, health. They're so still they're together. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. We'll see where that is. But if the Island Twins move in... It's just going to be. <laughs> Could you imagine? God, that'd be gross, but great. Uh, Speaking of Thanksgiving, I... your girl, Themi Gelato. Uh, <laughs> someone put this together. I had so many people send me this. I was like, I am blowing up in my DMs on Thanksgiving. Maybe I'm getting a nice, happy Thanksgiving. No, I'm getting this. Okay, so at uh, one point, Themi Lovato um, mm. posted a photo of her cuddling a turkey, mm. as you would a cat or a dog. It's a service turkey. And a lot of people, you know, didn't want to have turkey. They're vegan, vegetarian, whatever. But then she also posted a beautifully cooked turkey on her Instagram. Which, weirdly enough, this is the same turkey in both (laughs) pictures. This is the before. This is the after. What is this sad turkey? Does this, this doesn't look like any of the turkeys that I had on Thanksgiving. This is like some sad, it's just. It's good. There's a couple pieces, like a little bit of missing, but it's pretty, it's pretty cooked pretty well, I think. I don't know. Does Here's this turkey thing. identify as turkey? Right, exactly. There's so many questions. And I will also say to people, because sometimes people probably think I would never have a turkey on Thanksgiving. I would mm-hmm. never kill an innocent turkey. I just want them to know that like turkey bacon mm-hmm. is turkey. It's also bacon. <laughs> It's turkey bacon. It's turkey bacon. <laughs> a lot of people like turkey bacon. They're mm-hmm. probably not thinking that that's turkey. That there's anything turkey. A turkey sandwich, uh, a chopped salad with turkey. Ooh, that sounds it's all, good. It's all turkey. Like a turkey cob. It all comes from the turkey that you're cuddling. Yeah. So just you this know, isn't, this turkey knows it has death in its eyes. But you know. if there's one thing about Themi Gelato, she never contradicts herself. So she this really is does. Super it. shocking. Oh, yeah. I actually got a notification today that turkeys. 
hate being called turkeys. Really? Yeah, they prefer the term gobblers. So, oh my God, yes. Yeah, so we have to now only call them as gobblers. Yeah, they I hate the word turkeys because say... turkey is like, you stupid turkey. It sounds, it's belittling. Mm-hmm. And we need to uplift our turkeys right. and make them strong and empowered. Also, they would like, uh, they, they don't believe that the narrative that's been told about Thanksgiving mm-hmm. with the um, Native Americans right. and the people that came and destroyed the Native Americans. <laughs> right. <laughs> They feel like they their story hasn't been told. Their story has not been told. No, it has not been told. And I just want to say that mm-hmm. I the- do love turkey. Um, why don't people make a turkey more often than once a year? I mean, everybody loves a turkey sandwich, like I just said. Yeah. Why are more people, myself included, once a month not just picking up a small turkey and roasting it all day? And having some really fucking good turkey in their house. Yeah, it's a little basic. Why? Why are? Why is it only for one time? Because I mean, we're they basic. Do still sell. They <laughs> do still still sell whole turkeys like all year round in the grocery store, right? But no one touches it. I, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think we've just like made Thanksgiving so basic, where it's just like, okay, here's the turkey and the stuff. But like, the... I love it. Like, have turkey more often. I okay. do too. Well, are you? Do you do a turkey at Christmas, or are you like a ham? Kind of gal. I mean, we're probably just going to go out to dinner and have yeah. steak at Christmas. I like but Chinese food on Christmas. Is I, that weird? No. It's not okay. Cares. But I'm also like not a big ham person. Oh, when people bring a ham. Oh. Yeah. If you bring a ham, you're a psychopath. No one wants a ham. Hi, I brought this whole ham. Great. I can't wait to eat off of it for six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want a, I don't want a Christmas ham. I don't want a turkey. I, I had, for Thanksgiving, I had like one plate. That was it. I was done. I was so full. Good I had, for you. I had Thanksgiving guilt afterwards. I was like, I have to go to the gym again. Like, I had to. Pass and, out. And we're going to get on to some more stuff here. Okay. Let's Speaking talk about, of turkeys. <laughs> let's talk about Will Smith. Every time I think I've heard everything about his memoir, uh, page six blesses me with another story. Mm-hmm. This one is Will Smith says in his book, I used to vomit after orgasm, orgasming orgasming as a psychosomatic reaction well that's a weird entanglement (laughs) he says he had this girl this girlfriend named melanie which this isn't great for melanie hopefully you changed your name and he'd only slept (laughs) with one other girl prior to melanie Uh uh-huh well melanie cheated on him so he said he started having sex everywhere and he became a ghetto hyena. What did you call me? A ghetto hyena, which oh. I think is offensive to... The I, hyenas? And also, I thought you were not supposed to use the word ghetto anymore, but whatever. Ghetto hyena huh. sexually... Okay, so then he desperately needed relief, but there's no pill for heartbreak, so I resorted to a homeopathic remedies of shopping and rampant sexual intercourse. He is just coming out every day, isn't he? Up until this point in my life, I'd only had sex with one other woman. But over the next few months, I went ghetto, full ghetto hyena. That makes no sense. Apparently, that didn't agree with his inner being. I developed a psychosomatic reaction to ejaculating. Um, I had sex with so many women, and it was so constitutionally disagreeable to the core of my being that I developed this reaction to an orgasm, and I would literally make myself gag and sometimes even vomit as he's ejaculating. No wonder these women are cheating on you. (laughs) I don't want Will Smith on top of me ejaculating and vomiting into my face. I'm like, well, this isn't getting a second date. Who is this ghetto hyena? (laughs) What does that even mean? (laughs) Smith continued to sleep with women in hopes that he would cure his heartbreak. In every case, though, he'd hope that God, this beautiful stranger, would Mm. be the one. Can this girl be the one who would love me but would make this pain go away? But invariably, there I was, retching and wrecked. And the look in the eyes of the women even further deepened my agony. Yeah, yeah no you're shit. you're puking. Yeah, you're vomiting on these poor women who that are like, is... I'm hooking up with Will Smith. God, I just left my bulimic sorority sister at home to bone you. Oh and now God. I've got to see you puke at the end of the night. I don't want to see anyone puke, especially in bed. What a, what a damaging thing that does to someone. You're just like, oh, what an intimate moment. Oh, we're having this wonderful... Se- oh, are you okay? Yeah, everything's fine. I'm about to... Why are you oh throwing up? God. Because I feel like a ghetto hyena for sleeping <clears throat> with your wretchedy ass. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think the hyena community needs to gather around and cancel Will Smith. Because I, this, I think it's gross. 
Mm-hmm. And I just love how every everything is like every case. I hope God this this beautiful stranger would be the, like. Everyone sounds like Kanye West at this point. Oh, like suffering God, <laughs> God's like, like, what did I do? I what? didn't make you throw up on women. I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> Who's puking? And if this was a woman, uh, to the streets, banish her. Smith went on to marry Cherie Zampino in 1992. I believe that's who he had his son with. Then mm-hmm. they got divorced in 95. Then he married Jada Pinkett Smith, who he has an open relationship with. Um, and with her, he said, we drank every day. We had sex multiple times every day. Did he um, throw up on her? Apparently not. For four straight months during their courtship. And I started to wonder... Um, Is she the one? Because I'm not puking on her? I started to wonder if it was a competition. Either way, as far as I was concerned, there were only two possibilities. I was either going to satisfy this woman sexually or is going to die trying. Well, you didn't because she cheated with your son's best friend. Mm -hmm. Because he ain't never had a friend like her. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember that juicy story? Yeah, that was a juicy story. So her stepson's son, best friend, um, was hurting. Mm -hmm. And Jada Pinkett... Got in an in, into an entanglement. An entanglement with her legs around his penis. Mm-hmm. It got entangled, like you would might get a knot in your hair entangled. And he did not puke on her. He did not puke on her when he orgasmed, though he was very hurt uh, when she broke up with him. And they are together forever, but they can bone and puke on other people. <laughs> it's so gross. Could you imagine? Like he's conceiving. His kids and Jada's like on her back, and she's like, "Don't, do, do not, yeah. will, will, look at me, do not, uh, will, <laughs> stop it. We need a baby. Yeah, uh, uh, will. You can only throw up from your penis. Okay. Do you imagine if they have to go to the red table? He has to. Go, he has to go to the red table talk with uh, his mother-in-law and his daughter and talk about it. Oh. <sighs> When you were conceived. Or what, what if all of a sudden he actually did just get food poisoning? Maybe the turkey wasn't cooked enough and he's puking. Salmonella. And she's like, uh, you got something to explain to me? Are you going around like a ghetto hyena and having sex with a bunch of random she's people? A ghetto, a ghetto, ghetto hyena? Ghetto hyena <laughs> yeah, a ghetto having hyena. sex with a bunch of random women? Yeah. God. Anyway. Everything's weird. Well, um, you oh, know, concerts, <laughs> concerts are, you know... Um, what happened was this guy decided to go crowd surfing Mm -hmm. and we do commend any musician that now if you see it say something stop it make sure who's ever seems to be in distress well this person that decided to go uh crowd surfing at the heavy metal band Gwar is the name of it that was really close it's guar oh guar guar yeah (laughs) gwar Anyway, the man that was crowd surfing had a prosthetic leg, yes. and I guess it got twisted off and got he was way far from him. Mm-hmm. And so the band leader said, could you please um, yeah. stop it? This is Guar. And uh, I mean, a lot of – I mean, this outfit that he's wearing uh-huh. – what, are those really his feet in a pair of burkers? That can't be. No, That's no, got to no, be no. like a boot. Gwar, Gwar, I don't know why. I, I, I knew tell this me day would come when I would have to describe uh, Gwar on Juicy Scoop. Please tell me what it is. So Gwar is like this insane, crazy, I mean, metal. Like they get into like, they get pretty gory and gross. Like okay. there's like spit and they spit blood and there's like sparks. And I think at like one point there was like, they would have like live sex on their stages. And then puke afterwards. And like weird puke shit like that. And ejaculate? their music's all yeah. like. Oh, oh, sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is a nightmare. And that's why people go to see it. Because it's a nightmare on stage. Well, this guy was crowd surfing. And it was not a housewife who threw this leg. No. 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 Okay. The, the the but I do want to say if you are someone who has a prosthetic leg, mm-hmm. I don't think crowd surfing is a sport for you. I really I think of all the things maybe to do, maybe surfing isn't either because a shark bit that leg off. So right, maybe well just maybe don't that was surf. Maybe that's how he lost his yeah. leg, and the only kind of surfing he can do now is, crowd, is surfing. crowd surfing at a concert, and now he knows he can't do that either. Yeah, I mean he has so few joys in life. What if, what if you were the- the person like holding the guy up and then the leg just attaches and you're like, ah! <laughs> you're like, oh my God. 
<laughs> this guy's leg just came off. But I mean, uh, I feel like this is, uh, I love a Guar Christmas. Anyway, he stopped it and he was like, hey, that guy needs his motherfucking leg over yeah. there brought back to him, mother- assholes, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. God. See, even Satanists can be nice, you know? I found that hey, Satanists have guys. developed a, a great sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, speaking of all of that, I came across no, I came across this article and I didn't include it, but I just <laughs> thought it was kind of interesting. So this guy who believed in QAnon uh-huh. wrote an open letter to Donald Trump and um, on the Telegram or whatever, because now like Donald Trump's off Twitter or whatever, so they have to go on this other thing. And he's pretty disappointed that all the QAnon predictions haven't come true. Isn't that wild? Um, he said, you know, there were supposed to be all these arrests for all these um, Hollywood pedophiles Ooh. and elites that were eating children and all that. Where is that? Yeah. And then a JFK Jr. Was supposed, show up. was supposed to show up from Dallas like Jesus Christ rising from the dead. And they that did not happen. Mm-mm. And... What the hell, dude? Yeah. It's 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 very <laughs> mediocre. And he's like, I don't think I'm going to follow this QAnon person anymore. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it takes it takes. He's like, I've had to fight with my family for two years, yeah. and now it turns out... Mm. Yeah, maybe I want to get invited to holidays with my family yeah. again. Look, or maybe when, it, when it first began, I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah. I was pretty, you know, like, intrigued, but... Um, yeah, I never believed that JFK was um, not was living this earth, waiting to come out. Anybody that thinks <laughs> that someone that was that blessed in life, mm-hmm. with looks and pedigree like JFK Jr., would then fake his own death with at, his wife with his wife at thirty three, and then go, you know what? I'm not going to come back in two thousand. I'm not going to come back in two thousand and ten. I'm not coming back till 2015. I'm going to come back in like 35 years or no, what was it? About 20 years when I look really shitty, uh, don't have any money, haven't got, been able to go to a plastic surgeon, missed all these fun Thanksgiving with my family mm-hmm. and all my fun cousins like Arnold and Maria Shriver. And I missed all those fun times. And then I want to come back. I was like, First of all, he loved being in the limelight. The guy rode around New York City daily with no shirt on. How many guys... I think that's so weird, by the way, speaking of thirsty men. When a guy... Because I I just saw one on my... Like, around my neighborhood. You saw what? Jogging with no shirt. Okay. I... (laughs) I'm just like, really? Yeah, I Uh, think you're hot. Yeah. But, like, that's pretty thirsty. Like, you can't wear just a tank top. Like, you obviously want... People mm-hmm. to look at you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Because girls will wear skimpy shit, too. They under the tit everywhere. Girls do it all the time. But that is someone that liked the limelight and then acted like he hated that the paparazzi followed he and his wife friend all the time. Yet Jacqueline he, Bissett, he right? lived in a building that walked right down to New York City, rode his bike shirtless, had his, ber- like, his beret, so you always knew it was him. Mm-hmm. That was someone that, you know, there's no way that he could have just sat back for 20 years no. and been like, wait a minute. Yeah, I have a I'm reveal. Gonna, I'm going to look, I'm going to come out. I'm going to be about 59 years old uh, with mm-hmm. no Botox, no good skin cream. And you guys are going to die. How good I look. Like, I, <sighs> I actually have some juice for you. Guys. Oh, okay. Is I it- know. This actually isn't a Gore concert. Okay. This is JFK Jr.'s audition tape for the new season of The Masked Singer. Oh my God. Yes. yes! <laughs> that is brilliant. Okay, hey, uh-huh. hey, um, we're not QAnon, <laughs> but we're Juicy Scoopy on. Yeah. And we have our own predictions, Scoopy-on. and you could be part of it. I will disclose that not all of them are correct. Uh huh. A lot of them are. I appreciate it. I've had more predictions come true than QAnon. That's I will true. say that. That's true. I really have. So, but I also want to say they're not all true. So, But join the Scoopin' on. <laughs> Join the scooping on and know that we're not going to abandon you. 
Okay. Some of it might be true. A lot of it probably isn't. No, but, you know, sometimes I am right. Uh, This was fun. A 35-year-old Florida woman is facing criminal charges for allegedly giving unsolicited naked lap dances to a senior citizen's private home. Get it, bitch. This girl, Heather Cruz, Heather's for Heather's, keeping Heather's hot for generations to come which is my charity, Mm. uh, to get more young babies named Heather. This girl is really setting the precedent for being hot and sexy. She's 35. She showed up naked and on November 21st, and then she got naked and then grabbed and started hugging the homeowners. Um, This house of residence reportedly told her to stop. Stop! Stop! (laughs) Stop! Where's my pudding? And But instead, she allegedly sat naked on the laps of two of the home's other residents, she told one of them, you like it? Several of the residents were over the age of 65. And then when two of the residents tried to remove Cruz from the home, she allegedly grabbed one of the residents' crotch and made a sexual remark. Um, then police eventually arrived and they ordered the woman to put on a shirt. And then they handcuffed her and began placing her in the back seat. And she was, you know, fighting them off. And um, anyway, they charged her with three counts of batteries on person 65 years and older, two counts of batteries on law enforcement officers, and she was head on bail of 48000 This is meth. You know how I know? How do you know? Because the first sentence was 35-year-old woman from Florida. <laughs> and that was, that's meth. That is a naked, and she showed up naked. There yeah. wasn't a reveal. There wasn't a tease. She was no. just like, ah! Here it is. I'm Heather from Florida. You want it. You want it. Yeah. And these poor people. Was it a husband and wife? Or is no, it no. It's like a home. Like a home. Like a, a, a senior citizen living. So yes. They need better security at Florida Gardens. Well, I think it's like a private home that maybe houses like six seniors. Clearly not that private. If yeah. Heather's just. <laughs> Hurricane Heather's coming in there. Just tits out. God. Yeah, you want it. You want to base this turkey? <laughs> I know, it was right before Thanksgiving. What do you think it's worse? Who do you think had it worse? Florida one. The Florida senior citizens. Or Kanye. Or the homeless people at the L.A. mission. (laughs) (laughs) Can you imagine if one of those people knew something, they called their relative and they're like, how was your Thanksgiving in L.A.? I know you're having it rough. Did you, were you able to get a meal at one of the missions? Yeah, but Kanye showed up and ranted about himself yeah. and how sorry we should feel about him. Well, you should have seen Rupert. He had a naked woman gyrating on his dick. She went by the name Madonna. Yeah. <laughs> you want this, Grandpa? You want it? Um, God. Anyway, her bail oh. amount was set for 48000 What I think is interesting mm-hmm. is that another article I read, which I don't have here. I just read so many articles are all coming to me. There's a woman that went on the Spirit Airline flight from... Oh, uh, where was it? God, I think it, could it be was anywhere. Fort Lauderdale, also yes, from Florida. Yes. Could have been Heather. Oh, spirit <laughs> but in Florida. To Nashville. Mm-hmm. Obviously, she was already drunk. She hit and slapped a flight attendant, mm-hmm. pulled her hair. A other uh, passenger tied her feet together to get with her t- what tape? I don't Did know. They tape her to the seat. I want to say zip ties. I don't know how zip the other tie. passenger had it, but anyway. Yeah. Then they got off the plane, and she. Like, held her legs out straight so they couldn't get her in the car, and she, you know, said all these things. Let out from jail on $100. Wow. Someone has a reason to be thankful. And Spirit said, we're not going to press charges. We just don't want her over back on our airline. Now, do you think an airline does that? So they're like, fuck you, United and Airlines, you know, uh, American Airlines, we're never going to have her again. Now you can deal with her. Yeah, it's Spirit Airlines. Why, That's what they why do. would they block them from any airline? Let, yeah, some people do not need to get, don't get to fly. Like, yeah. that's it. No. You're yeah. taking a bus. You're getting zip-tied and taped to your seat. I You're do that going- in my stand-up. I, it baffles me how these people just like, ah, just lose their shit in the sky. <laughs> And everyone's like, you know, people get involved. I'm like, I'm not, if I'm having to tackle somebody, I better get some Sky Miles. Yeah. You know? I better get a free cocktail. Give me an upgrade. Like, let me let me, let me, me live out my truth in the sky. I'm, I'm not, like, no. How Mm-mm. is this? Spe- I do not have to just be a flight attendant. You have to be beaten. Like, risk being beaten. This other girl, she, her mom just posted her taking the um, announcement phone at Target uh-huh. and quitting her job. Uh-huh. And 
she had it for two years and she quit her job at Target because she said there was a creepy guy that was out in front that was like stalking her and was hanging out there and she'd been followed home like followed to her car she told Target like can you do something about it and she felt that they weren't protecting her to be safe and that's another thing it's like it's not these people's jobs mm-hmm. that work at these stores to like scoot away the psychos and everything. Like if they, you know, like I just like when there was this homeless encampment thing happening at a Target near us. I like see this young kid mm-hmm. like with his vest that he like collects the carts and stuff. He's like telling the homeless people like he's not qualified to do that. Yeah, he shouldn't be subjected to have to do that. Like. What I'm going to create hell? my own airlines called I Wish a Bitch Would Airlines because yes. I feel like <laughs> there needs if you want to act like an an idiot or an asshole come come fly with me because I've 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 had a long pandemic like yes. let's let, I'm tired of it and it's like I felt bad because um my friend and I when we were driving over to her her family's house for Thanksgiving we were like I'm starving we need to go get something to eat we stopped off at a Taco Bell and as we're pulling into the drive through I'm, I look over and there's this like guy I don't know if you saw it on my Instagram stories no. there was this guy just I don't like, follow you just kidding <laughs> I don't follow you I've muted and blocked you great perfect you're too thirsty come to Juicy Scoop yeah this guy's yeah. like tweaking out he's like it looks like he's like masturbating okay. and I pull up to the window and I'm like um there's someone jerking off in the in the grass over here and they're like okay I'm like, well, that was it. So I put it up on Instagram, and I get flagged for like, you know, they're like, oh, this is inappropriate. And I'm like, right. okay, but yeah, it's like no one's. Yeah, right. I'm like, and is that, this the drive-through attendant's job to be? No, like, it's not the yeah. drive-through. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't blame them for being like, what the hell do you want me to do yeah. about it? Like, I'm fucking making your taco. Leave yeah, me alone. I'm making your taco. Leave yeah. me alone. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Absolutely speaking right. of this? other careers, oh, this, Tiffany is, Moon. this is Tiffany Moon. I have her uh, wine here, mm-hmm. which I have not had, but I think I'm going to have it soon because I heard it's very good. Yeah. She um, was on The Real Housewives of Dallas. The show has since been... Hiatus? No, canceled. canceled. But sometimes they bring these things back, but mm-hmm. right now, no chance of it coming back. So she did stand-up last night. What? Or Where? two nights ago. Some club called the Dallas Comedy Club. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so anyway... <laughs> And she likes to do funny TikToks. She went to see my stand-up. She's very nice. But also Joe Gorga of The Real Housewives of Jersey, of Jersey who's married to Melissa, he is now uh, doing stand-up. And Katie of, uh, of The Bachelorette, she opened for Whitney doing stand-up. Uh-huh. So I- <laughs> Everything's great. Everything's great. We're good. Everyone's good. Thriving. We are thriving. Yep. <laughs> so I want to say, um, first of all, okay, so so listen, people always think that they can do stand-up and want to do stand-up because you go see it and you're like, I can tell a funny story. I can relate to all the stuff that this professional who's been doing it for 20 years in front of me is doing it so effortlessly. Mm-hmm. That's what you want to do. However, when you're famous – If you really want to do this, there is a little bit of a bummer to it because you can't really do it the way you should Mm -hmm. anonymously where people don't know who you are. Because even when I started to do stand-up, the best advice I got was don't let an industry person – don't invite an industry person to see you. Don't put out a tape to them for at least two years of doing stand-up. Okay, before you even have representation. Well, to this generation, that just seems unheard of. You're going to put your first set on YouTube and TikTok and let the world know how hilarious you are. But if you really want to do it as a career, you really got to like, you know. And now when you're famous, of course, you're going to post about it, want to fill the room. And of course, people are going to put you on their stage because you can bring – You're going to sell the tickets. Some promoters probably right now listening to Juicy Scoop and they're going to put Tiffany, Katie, and Joe Gorga on the – Reality show, and comedy are we going? tour. Yes, and we will sit front row and watch. Oh my god! It's but, true, though. I mean, it's like it's like. Oh, I want to try this. Okay, but I think that you have a right to try it. But then you have that, a right, and, and you can totally pursue it. And but it's like it's just it's like the and I was I was telling Annie this. I go, you know, I remember when I interviewed Melissa Rivers, and I said, "Did you ever want to do stand up?" And she's like. Even if I did, Heather, there's no way I could have. Do you right. imagine if I 
like was getting on stage. Let's just say we're like similar in age. What if she was trying to do it in her 20s when I was and we were on Pretty Funny Women together? All press would come and see her. Mm -hmm. They would tear her apart, even if she did have some funny jokes. And she would never have the same opportunity that an anonymous person would to build that. And so I was thinking like, wow, kids of actual stand-up comics. Like let's say Kevin Hart's son wants to do it. Or um, I feel like even if my son wanted to do it, he has a bit of advantage that he has a different last name. Mm -hmm. But like – People are, you know, unfortunately, it's like the one job that your parent could be really successful at. Yeah. That you actually don't have the same. It's not oppor- genetics. You don't have the. But also, but I'm saying society, like in every other career, uh-huh. the nepotism could help you. Well. Except stand up. Kaya they, Gerber, Cindy Crawford. Right. I get it. You right. know. Acting. Yeah. Directing. Uh, your parents <clears throat> own a restaurant. You mm-hmm. could be a restaurant or mm-hmm. whatever. But with stand up. It's like it's the one thing where like people are not going to be like, yeah, you did, you know, 10 minutes at the improv. So yeah. Kevin Hart's son, you should have a Netflix special. And it's like You'd and, be surprised and, though. Have you Sometime, seen that though? Well, what yes. what? Okay, what child of a stand up, not SNL, uh-huh. not sketch. What child of a stand up has become a really successful stand-up in their own right when their dad was one as well. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with the Wayans. The Wayans, because uh, there's there's uh, Shantae Wayans. Well, she's, there's Shantae. Yeah. She's a niece. Um, there's... Uh, Damon Jr. Mindy Rickles. Don Rickles' daughter. But I don't think she's famous. Probably the Wayans are the only, yeah. are the only ones. Yeah. The and Wayans, I think, they, I think. I think the Wayans are the only ones. And even then, I think... I think it still is hard, you know, with that name walking in there and trying to, like, you know, establish your own thing. And you're not – and then, like, what is your jokes about? Your childhood yeah. jokes are going to be about your famous of family. Of course, of course, of course. And as juicy as that is, that's not typical relatable material to the world as if you just – were versus the worldview that – Damon and Keenan had when they first started stand up. Their worldview at twenty was a very relatable, funny thing. Uh-huh. And if that wasn't what your life was like, you appreciated hearing their life story. Like it's going to be very different for a child of a stand up. I heard a story how Richard Pryor's son, I want to say, yeah. was like, "Oh, you know, I'm I'm Richard Pryor's son," and he like did a spot, and it was like, "I don't know this person. I just heard I this." Interviewed him. Boom. And apparently it was like, no, I know because it was like, mm, because it doesn't run in the family. But also, you like I said, in the defense <clears throat> of the child, you know, of a famous parent, mm-hmm. they don't have the years of practice to mm-hmm, stumble mm-hmm. and bomb. The hustle, they, the grind. I'm saying, yeah, but yeah. they don't have the opportunity to bomb. Yeah, we know if they're bombing, mm-hmm. and if everyone knew that you bombed, you might not get up again. Yeah, but when you bomb, and maybe your best friend saw you, and nobody else. And two of your friends also on the on the bill at the open mic bombed. You encourage each other to go back. Is yeah. what I, that's what I'm trying to say. What? I'm saying like is as like I'm not shitting on this. No, no, no. I'm no, saying no. it's actually kind of a bummer. Yes. It's kind of the one art form that you can't. It's like with music, like um, like let me uh, pull up this other one. Uh, Nicki Minaj. Mm-hmm. Nicki Minaj at the end of Real Housewives of Potomac. She took over for Andy. And she was a fan of the show, and she got to ask the ladies questions. And I watched it um, this morning, and I think, honestly, that she did a great job because she was asking questions because she could relate to the women. She watched the show. She is a black woman. She would be friends with these women, and she was asking some harsh questions but was, like, really asking juicy questions about, like, I think that you brought that up because you wanted the airtime. I think, and then she'd bring up like things like, I really appreciated your relationship with your mother. Like mm-hmm. she was sensitive. She did a good job. I talked about it the other day because she has got a lot of controversial with controversy with her husband, her husband right yeah. now, um, mm-hmm. who was did time for sexual assault. And, and this I talked about on the other show, you can look it up. But as far as what she did here, she did a good job. And the other thing is she started to ask one of the girls about being a singer. And she was a little critical of it. But then she kept She did go- judge Idol. Yeah. And she goes, kept <laughs> – she he did? Yeah. She goes, Minaj, let me, yeah. she goes, let me hear you sing because, of course, she's a singer. Let me hear you sing. And, and 
Candace is like, I'm not the best dancer. I'm not the best performer, but I do believe I have a, a good vocal range. I've been singing my whole life. And she goes, well, sing right now. Sing your song right now. And she kind of didn't want, and I kind of was like, I hate, it's like when someone says to you, really, you're funny? Yeah. Say a joke. Say a joke right now. Anyway, Candace pulled it out, and she does have a good voice, and she sounded good. And then Nikki was like, good job. Welcome to Hollywood. So my point is, <laughs> do you think there's a future for Heather McDonald to take the fourth hour of reunions for Andy mm-hmm. that in with cities in which I relate to, like an OC or Beverly Hills, and then encourage the women to pursue their stand-up comedy. Dream career. big, yeah. But I, I think... would be the. I would say, all right. You think? Let me let me see a tight three minutes right now. Yeah. Tell me about your mom's cooking when you were ten. Tell me about it. Tell me about like what? Like I would be like, I'm just gonna give you. A subject, you just go off and you do some hacky stand-up, and I'm going to tell you if it's going to work or not. Well, that's what I think is so interesting when we were talking about earlier how, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter, like, oh, I do TikToks and all that kind of stuff. That's the thing that's difficult is sometimes, a lot of the times, that doesn't translate onto the stage. So you're like, oh, look, I'm getting, like, five million likes of this, like, little clip I did on TikTok. Right. Cool. But when you take that on a stage in front of a crowd of people or a theater full of people, they're going to be like, what? What am I watching? What is this? But what I love about TikTok and stuff is that is one creative outlet Mm -hmm. art form. Yeah. And stand-up is another. Yes. They are not interchangeable. You don't have to be good at both. Right. You know, a stand-up might have not a big desire to do a bunch of little funny videos. That person would rather go and tell stories on stage. Yeah. Like, that's their art form. So it's the same thing. With podcasting. Uh, Not everybody needs to have a podcast. True. It's the same thing. But anyway, very... Okay, so speaking of which, I also want to say, I want to follow up this, on did this Did she story. steal your outfit from the airport? Remember? Oh, my God. When, yes, and you wrote that mean thing. You said I was... I didn't say it was mean. This is Heather like, Thompson. She's yeah. wearing a yellow suit like the man in the yellow with a hat. brown hat. From Curious George. And it was very much the Curious George <laughs> outfit. <laughs> yeah. Side by side it. You'll see who wore it better. Um, I talked about this because Heather Thompson, who's a former Real Housewives of New York, um, said in a book about all the housewives that Sonia um, had an alcohol problem and she let men uh, (laughs) put out lit cigarettes on her vagina. Okay, that's new. Well. Tis the season. (laughs) So (laughs) then a fan found an old Instagram video. Of Josh Flagg, my friend, uh-huh. realtor to the stars. Putting Leonardo cigarettes Lissing, out on his vagina. Jo- joking with Sonia about that time I put out a cigarette on your vagina. Mm-hmm. I call him up and he says, we were joking. We were joking. Heather must have seen that and thought it was real and said it was a joke. Well, she doubled down in what she says is going to be her last interview about the Real Housewives of New York. She's no longer part of it. Page six. So she says um, that – she talked about a couple other things, but I'm just going to focus on this part. Um, Let's see. She gets into it. Um, Okay. Okay. People said they didn't believe the story Mm -hmm. about Josh Flagg. Then a video surfaced with uh, Sonia Morgan and Josh Flagg in which Flagg stuck a cigarette up um, Sonia Morgan's vagina. So then Thompson said, I wasn't telling a secret. It was this thing they were into for a while, and I was not dropping tea in that book. I was talking about something that was public knowledge. Mm, mm -hmm. Flag denied the story and recently told the Juicy Scoop podcast that it was all a joke and that Heather Thompson is full of shit, not Heather McDonald. Oh, yeah, clearly. Heather Thompson. But Thompson is standing by her story saying that she had heard that Morgan was working on what Thompson calls a dark cabaret show (gasps) in the book and that another show insider compared the girly shows to Bangkok. Oh, we can't have Luann know about this other cabaret show. (laughs) Oh, my God. Money can't buy a class. (laughs) I'm not putting any cigarettes in my vagina. I only vape. Uh, (laughs) She's putting vapes in her vagina. (laughs) But Thompson said that she was shocked when she and her husband, Jonathan Schindler, ran into Morgan and Flagg at the Boom Boom Room at Manhattan Standard Hotel in 2014. I want to say at that time that was a pretty hot spot. Mm -hmm. I saw them together and I saw that she had been drinking. And I was keeping an eye on her, Thompson told the Post. Moments later, I was like, wait, 
there, where is Sonia? She found Morgan and Flag on the roof deck. They were about to show another man the trick they do, Thompson said, of the illicit cigarette. When she asked what Morgan and Flag were doing, she added, they told her, yeah, we'll show you. We make it smoke. Yeah, hold on. We make it smoke. So um, she she never saw it, though. She never saw yeah, the she, cigarette she said, I heard. go in the vagina. Yeah, no. Heather's full of shit. And also, we don't know if the cigarette was in the lips of the vagina, like a little like... like Hello, my baby. Hello, yeah, my honey. <laughs> or if you put it in the actual hole of the vagina. Oh, God. Anyway. This she, is something that Julie Goldman can figure out, I think. She, she'll well, get on the no, case. <laughs> I'm on the case. I have a call. I sent these these parts of the article to Josh Flagg. Uh-huh. And I said, do you want to respond now? Do you remember this night at the Boom Boom Room in 2014? And he said, "I'll yes, but I can't now. He's ghosting me. He's like, I'll show you at the Christmas party. <laughs> You're like, wait, no. Oh, God. Uh, I, I mean, this is, I, uh, no. I, I don't mean, think. She's doubling down. But she says uh, there's so many things that are fake about the show, that she had to wait in the car for two hours to go to parties, that um, she did hear Ramona say what she's been accused of saying, which is um, Ramona was accused of saying, this is why we shouldn't have black people on the show. Oh, right. And she said that she did hear it. So she obviously, and Singer has denied that over and over again. But Thompson is no longer going to ever talk about Real Housewives again. Until next week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Sonia would be into the vagina singer. I think Sonia would be the naked Heather in Florida barging into the old folks' home, humping them and all that. That's more, I think, Sonia's speed. Yes. She's not like, no one's lighting cigarettes in their hoo-ha. And she's giving, and let's, going back to, you know, I know that a lot of people during the holidays um, do Christian service hours, and part of that is visiting an old folks' home. Or ranting about, uh, like, Kanye at Thanksgiving. Yeah, to a the lot. Homeless. Yes. So, you know... <laughs> So in doing your things, just be careful. Now, Alexander McQueen has put out of a dress. This was on an online ad that has been going around. Someone sent it to me. It is $6,490, and it is a white prairie dress Mm -hmm. that has a big blood mark. So people, it could be murder. It could be that you were slaughtering a turkey Mm -hmm. or a pig before you had to churn the butter to roast it with. Yeah, it's giving me Oregon Trail dysentery vibes. Yeah. Very Lizzie Borden with her family. Now, this, um, unfortunately, I don't think was stolen in the grab-and-go. This definitely was not. This is a full-on... This is like the little girl in the village who gets possessed by the devil, and then she runs towards the preacher, and the preacher has the shotgun and has to, you know, take her down. Yeah, for the sake so of the village. So, do you think anyone is going to buy this dress? Uh, like, like the name of the this site, I think it's a far fetch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that someone's going to buy this outfit. Now I wonder. I hope this is real. No, if someone's wa- if you saw someone walking around, no, this, but I hope you would now call I'm the wondering, police. Is this a joke? It has to be. But again, well, you, she's got to look it up. It has to. It has to. Okay. Uh, who knows? Oh, this was my favorite turkey. Okay, so this was a fun thing that happened over Thanksgiving. Oh. Madonna, basically, it looks like a, a the turkey that was shoved under her bed. It is real. It's real. It's on Nordstrom's. It's Let's at, go get it's it at Nordstrom's. Nordstrom's. Yeah. Do you guys have the blood clot peri dress? I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's called what? Pink Mix. I know what I'm wearing to the Christmas party. So, Th- uh. so Madonna is wearing uh, fishnet <laughs> tights and Louboutin black pumps. And then she just crawled under a bed. Mm-hmm. And then do you imagine having to ask your, one of your four children to take this photo? You guys, before you get pumpkin pie, I'm just going to crawl under this bed. And mm-hmm. I need you to take some good photos of my Instagram. Then come around before I get under the, before I get out from under the bed. Can you come around the other side of the bed and just show me the photos so I make sure that we have it? Yeah. And then if not, I'm going to take take a, a few more, and then I'm going to post it. Now this series of unfortunate events, um, I there was a lot of memes going around. There was the one of the Wicked Witch of the East under the house. Yes, where the house crushed her little legs. There was there, there was one of like someone made it into like frog legs at a at a Louisiana fry. A totally you know? frog leg, yeah. It's here's the thing. I was talking about it with uh, the parents of the 
<laughs> people that I was having Thanksgiving with. Yes. And they're uh, like Madonna's age as well. And they're yeah. just kind of like, we don't understand it because like, with the, like share, share, congr- like I, I appreciate getting older and owning your, your age and being sexual. Like share is share. Cher's not hiding under her bed with her cooch out with a cigarette out of it. <laughs> like, this, I don't understand what, what this is. And, and it's like, you know, she got flagged for this because I guess one of her nipples well, I was have out. The, I have the nip. Oh, please. I have the nip pick. Uh, I made uh, sure I took it before uh, it was yeah. gone. Uh, I'm a hot nana. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 uh. It's, it's just, I don't understand it. Because, again, like I think of her kids. I'm like, what are they fucking, like, mom, what are you doing? But again, it's like expression. Well, if Cher was here, she'd say, "If I could turn back time, I know. If I could find a worry, I would not put myself under this." We bed. would never see Cher. I feel like the last time Cher was sexual, she had a g-string on, um, on that Navy ship, yeah, singing turn back that time. song, yeah. and then she was in her forties. But now, listen, I don't think there is an age where you have to stop being sexy. Right. I just think. You're Madonna. Why do you have to do what every other thirsty girl has to do, only fans person has to do? Why not you rise above it and not do such sexual stuff? Yes. You just nailed – you just answered your own question. Yes. Because she has to stay relevant. And we're so talking she's about her. Looking I wouldn't at, be talking about her if she had a beautiful bloodstained dress on her. She if had, she was yeah. wearing the Alex oh. Thander McQueen dress. Yeah. As Madonna, I I'd would be like, still okay. be talking about her, but we might not have even get gotten as much hype as this. She has a Brazilian butt lift or something. It doesn't. Implants, it, it I don't looks know. It's fucking huge. weird. Yeah, you know, she's got. She looks like a brat doll. Oh, a lot of there's now lots of evidence that both uh, Kim and Chloe have decreased their ass. They're letting it come down. Good. They're either removing it or reshaping it. Good. Nature is healed. So people are wondering if the ass is going to go away. I think the ass will go away to the extreme cartoony ass. Yeah. But a nice ass is a nice ass. Just get a nice juicy booty. A nice natural juicy booty. This is just like... Like it's looking, it's ready for that hand to go in it with the stuffing. Like pull out a wishbone. And there's like a little like rip. It's ripped. And it's like... And here's what... This is... (laughs) Yeah. It... You know, in the Instagram, she was like, art should never be uh, taken advantage of. Creation is what we are. Artists yeah, need to be nipple. inspired. And I'm like, you were underneath your bed with your cooch out. What are you What are you talking about? Right. Or, and she's like, well, why does this nipple... Now, this is kind of interesting. She said, why does my nipple have to be removed when other nipples can be allowed? And I just realized... Whose nipples are being allowed? Well... <gasps> Elliot Page's are. Now this is bum, kind bum, of bum. this is kind of interesting. Elliot Page mm-hmm. was born Ellen Page, mm-hmm. the star of Juno and many shows. As you know, since so you listen to Juicy Scoop, Ellen came out as gay, was married to a woman, then came out as trans, mm-hmm. changed the name and pronoun to he and they and Elliot. Elliot has finished his transition. As far as the chest, I don't know what's going down below. No one will ever know. But, um, or we might, but anyway. (laughs) uh, So he, you know, has his torso, Mm -hmm. which is worked out and looks like a, you know, a a skinny white guy. I think he's only got one tattoo, so I don't think he's up for joining the Kardashians just yet. No, 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 no. But, um, Hey, his nips are allowed on Instagram. Yeah. So why do, why are his but his nips wouldn't have been allowed two as years Ellen, ago yeah. as Ellen? I mean, that's Taylor's oldest. Oh time. my God! When this is the I, whole free this, the nipple movement. Here is my um, I doctorate. say free the nips. This is my doctorate uh, paper that I'm putting together. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I think just free thought the nips, of that. You know, and I feel congrats. Uh, yeah, you're right. That's not really fair. It's that's free the nips. not nip. really fair. And that's what I thought was like, I, I don't agree that Madonna's thing, sh- or her her picture should have been, you know, reported or flagged or whatever. Because I do. I'm like, we all have them. My God. But also, I love that Elliot's now just a full, full gay man because you have an account called Not Skinny But Not Fat liked your post. <laughs> that's like. That's just another, just a gay man. Watch, That's not, it's a girl, I no, know her. Not skinny, but not fat? It's a girl, yeah. It's a girl? Yeah, okay. she's great, yeah. But I, I do see that Elliot, Elliot's going to be running with the Colton Underwood crowd soon, I think. So, but I want to say... Thirst Trap Fuckboy vibes. Yeah. 
And you know, or maybe on the new season of Fuckboy Island. And what's interesting is sometimes these strong, who we thought you know were strong women that transitioned to men. I've heard a few people say this about some trans men. They turn into douchey fuckboys. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm just looking at those. Just abs. like men that become women can turn into you know rude bitches. I don't know. Yeah, you, I- if you were. If you're thirsty before, you're going to be thirsty after. Yeah, but I think yeah, the thirst is real, and I'm 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 I want those abs for Christmas. And then and then uh, Elliot wrote something, you know, to be clever, like, "Oh, good, my new phone works." Uh, trap them, bitch. Trap, trap them, trap them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when it's like that's the classic, like, oh uh, yeah, mm-hmm. look, I got my new juicy scoop mug, and you're just holding your yeah, dong. like just yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> Like, oops, forgot to feed the dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Forgot yeah. to make breakfast. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, oh, oh that's exactly but what I was thinking. whenever a thirsty person mm-hmm. um, does. I know several of them. Uh, I know several female comedians mm-hmm. that are thirsty that show several. their hips, <laughs> that are water skiing with uh-huh. tits out, skiing uh-huh. with tits out. And then they try to say, how dare you censor me? I say, come on. Like, you don't have to be the OnlyFans girl. You have a brain. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do it, just say, I needed the attention. I was being thirsty. But you won't because you're, because whatever. But anyway, the point, the point is. I've taken a picture Instagram can decide. Yes. This, they, this, this is their own entity. If they want to take it down, if they want to say, we're not going to allow it. If we're, if they're going to say, you're promoting something, you know, that we don't feel is right for us. That is their choice. Kids, people look at this and they make the decision and it, you don't have a right. What are you going to go protest about? It? Go find your own thing. Go join Telegram with your nips. <laughs> go, like, whatever. Like, follow the rules. Like, I hate it when people just get so insane about it. Yeah. Like, okay, well then find another way for people to hear you. This is just Elliot Page um, promoting the old iPhone 12. You know, <laughs> it's got the two cameras on it. He's very vintage. Go, Speaking Elliot. Of abs and stuff. Emrata's stomach scares me. Do we not see a penis in her stomach? Does when that I, not look like a penis? Yeah, well, it's uh, like, and okay, I'm not. Okay, so this girl, she's some, a model, and she posted Emily this. Emily Ratajkowski, I and talked she to her. Said, um, oh, she wrote, like, thank you, you know. Mew, mew. I like this outfit. Her stomach is extremely thin and worked out, but it's very, very weird. And I, I see a penis in it. And I had a poster that was a famous poster in college. I just looked it up. I couldn't find it. I'm sure DC Cooper has it. It was a hot guy's torso. Uh-huh. And what, what made the poster, everybody was framing it and putting it in their college dorms, is in the abs, the way it was lit, you could see a nice penis within the this. abs. Within the abs. We will find it. This is a penis in her abs. It's she's always it's always looked like this. She's beautiful. She's from the blurred lines video. Like she and the weird she just had a baby. Well, did the baby leave his penis in her stomach? Maybe so. But I, when we when we would talk about her on what the fashion on E, I was always just drawn to her stomach cuz I'm like did it always look like this? It always looks like that. Yeah, that is just. I mean, bizarre. it's bizarre. Is it? I mean, is it? Is it worked out? Because I, as a guy, I don't know, and I'm not trying to be like her stomach's gross. Like I'm not trying to do like, but I am like. I have never seen a weird. Stomach it looks like, like that. It's, it's a scar. Not, I always thought it was like. I'm a sorry. Scar. You know who has a better stomach than her? Madonna. Elliot Page. Oh, okay. Whew. Yeah, Elliot Page has. That's. A, I mean, I. I like Elliot Page's stomach mm. a lot. A lot better. Stop stomach shaming. I just want to say that oh. coming out Colton before you go, December 3rd, his journey to a new reality. Mm. Colton, as you know, mm-hmm. was the super Christian um, bachelor. He came out as gay, which we knew was coming. No he was off, awful to his girlfriend when he had her. Stalked her. And was terrible. Left uh, trackers on her car. Tr- seriously, and like, let's give just, him a Netflix show. Yeah, let's get, let's, but... He's so brave. Mm. And he was an awful to his girlfriend because we now know. He had demons to deal with. Which was, he liked he liked the, the stomach of, what's her name? <laughs> the stomach of Emily Ratajkowski. And he didn't know why. Why because, am I only well, attracted her whole to stomach, her stomach? Her whole stomach is a cum gutter. That's why. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Did you watch this trailer at all? <laughs> no. What is the, what is the trailer like? The beginning like? was, Please it tell. was like, I... 
I just told I, I I was praying to myself I didn't want to be gay, and I'm like, okay, God, we get it, but. I just want to read the caption. This yes. image was captured moments after I came out to my dad, which was one of the most meaningful parts of my coming out journey. I'm looking forward to sharing more of my story with you, including the lessons I've been learning along the way. Coming out Colton premieres on Netflix December 3rd. Now. Can I just say I don't believe you? I don't believe that Colton, after he came out to his dad, was like, can we just go in the backyard? I'm going to look down. And no. And just take a photo of me? You're such no. a liar. It's so. And here's the thing. As a gay man. Oh. I know. Okay. Coming out, Justin, premieres this January on Netflix. It's my journey from Juicy Scoop to my authentic self. Um, Sadly, it's not on Netflix. And, it's yeah, on this, and this picture is when no, I came actually out Discovery to my Plus. dad. Yeah. <laughs> Discovery Plus. Paramount Plus. Um, I just think, you know, he, and it's him hanging out with his hot snowboarder friend, Gus Kenworthy, who happens to be an Olympic medalist. And then he teaches them how to court gay guys. So I, a lot of courting to it, I guess you have to learn. It just makes me. It just makes me cringe just thinking about it because it, it's just going to be a bunch of white dudes who all look the same going out to brunch and just at, you know. I wish you know. I'm hoping that there's a little bit of like a education, like we're going to learn the history of the LGBTQ plus IA. I think I fucked that up, and I'm gay. Uh, the LGBTQ plus I did I say that right? Yeah, I, I did. Say, I did it right. Say, I just haven't said it in a while. I'm gonna say you're not gonna learn that because Caitlyn tried to do that, and no Who? one was, and, they, and no one was interested. <laughs> no they, one was interested because Caitlyn was still a bitch, a crazy but, bitch. But if Caitlyn and her girlfriends would have done more like fun stuff that was exciting to watch of just them being bitchy and not sitting around and talking about the. I'm just saying, people yeah. don't want to see that. I want to see some actual. They want to see him. I I've told you, uh-huh. I am very attracted to gay guys that are hot that make out. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> and so I might watch it for my own horniness. That's fine. And I, this is a movement that I don't think a lot of people are aware of because guys always know. We all know that guys like to watch girl hot girls make out. Straight girls, right. I am telling you. I don't want to see hardcore porn, but enough where like straight guys are fit and they're like making out or like getting really close. I mean, it is a good time. Uh huh. It is a good time. Maybe they knew this. Maybe they said, look, not just gay guys are going to watch this. So you're going to have fun with me and my date at the Christmas party. I like look over and you're just like, I'm like, Heather, can you get out of here, Heather? Yes, yes, yes. Keep on kissing. Keep on kissing, guys. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, I only like first base <laughs> uh-huh. um, homo relationships. Okay. I don't need to see full, I, I don't have no desire to see it more than just chemistry, mm. like grabbing each other. Passion. Like, yeah, like back of a neck grab. Yeah. Make out, just make out. I yeah. w- that's what I'm going to see. I want to see if he's actually like. Makes out with somebody in this. I also oh, want to see. Oh, I want to see the activism. You think too. they're going to give him a show if he didn't make out? I the don't producers know. would come and be like, "We're shutting down production unless you get deep throat this dude now." <laughs> we need a fantasy suite stat. <laughs> like, I want to see that fantasy uh, suite. Anyway, I, good for him. I'm happy if no, he's you're happy. Not. No, you're not happy. Contractually, I have to say, <laughs> <laughs> I am happy for his journey. To a new reality. Well, what you uh-huh. don't know is uh-huh. one of the episodes is he goes to the comedy store and he does stand up. Oh my god, he probably will. I you actually, know he will. I wonder. Oh my god, if I was a producer, I'd go. We're gonna have you do stand up. Okay, hold on, stop. Uh-huh. <laughs> Season two of Coming Out Colton. The producer calls you we and did. says, "Justin, uh, yeah, um, we know you're such a funny stand up." Mm-hmm. We want you to, this next season of Coming Out Colton is Colton Does It. And we don't mean just about doing hot guys. Okay. He's going to do different jobs. Wanda Sykes did this. A lot of people do this series, Paris. Oh, I'm trying jobs I'm not good at. So Colton's <laughs> going to try jobs. And one of them is he's going to do stand-up. Mm-hmm. So we need for you to sit down with him and write him in a seven-minute stand-up routine. The place is going to be sold out. With Bachelor fans, Heather McDonald, other people. Um, and then you'll be featured on the show. You tell me you're going to say no to that offer? No. You're I'll just... do it. Yes. I'll do it. But. <laughs> Hollywood, what's your dream? Hold on. I got to put a cigarette in my vagina real quick. Do the voice again for Pretty Woman. Go. 
Welcome to Hollywood. What's your dream? Yeah. Uh, oh, everybody's and, got a dream. And it's Roxette. Listen to your heart. Oh, okay. That was the song everyone okay. was like yelling at me for. Oh, so many people um, yell. Or no, it must have been love, but it's over now. Oh, that yes. was the one. But um, I am. I would. I would question if I did see Colton Underwood like in passing. If he would like give me a double take. <laughs> would you go out with him? Huh? Would you go out with him? Yes, for the story. Should I get Colton on Juicy Scoop? Why not? All right. Get him on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell him I think you should do stand-up, and i got just the guy Heather, to teach you to do it. I'm so close to big things. <laughs> Why would you just steal the little thunder that I have? <laughs> Colton Underwood, I've been there for you. <laughs> We have DM'd, oh. and you're going to have Colton Underwood on your show. I get it. It's Hollywood You know what I was going to say? Though? You know how I would, I would say that Kim Kardashian, you know, was – I don't know if she's still pursuing law school, but I at one point I was like, if she does succeed – but so far, she didn't pass the baby bar, so I don't know if she is. Right. She does succeed not going to actual law school, having just like a tutor for a couple mm. hundred thousand a year or whatever. I said, I wonder if other rich people will not go to actual law school and hire tutors and stuff. So mm-hmm. far, it hasn't worked out for her. I guess mm-hmm. the law school experience is worth something. Mm-hmm. But what if more people just hire stand-ups? That help them to be stand-ups, write their material, help them they practice do do it. That. I know, but then rather than do the work. That's what Kim did on SNL. Yeah, but that's SNL. I'm talking right. like real stand-up. Like yeah. you're just like, they're just, yeah. I mean, I think probably Jeremy Piven did that to a point. Oh, girl, yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think, I mean, maybe maybe he has writers telling him what to, how to be gay. Oh, by the way, before <laughs> we wrap it up, yeah. I watched True Story with Kevin Hart on Netflix, the whole like six episode thing. Mm-hmm. Do you know about it? It's very mm-hmm. good. What is it? It's super, it's, it's a scripted six part series of an idea he had. It's not funny, but he does play a version of himself, mm-hmm. a stand-up who's in movies and stuff, and is very popular. And then this bad thing happens, and it's scripted, and it's good. Okay. What's it called? True Story. True Story. And one of my friends, I saw that he is a credit on it. He has a, a producer writer on it. So I'm hopefully going to have him come in. Mm-hmm. But I want to give you guys a minute to watch it along with Selling Sunset because I'll be talking about that in later episodes. But it's time for Justin to say goodbye. <laughs> and he probably will say goodbye because where are you going next? To You're going to do a grab and go in San Francisco, right? I'll do right? a grab and go in San Francisco. Uh, I think the eight, the weekend of the 17th and 18th I'll also be in Right Phoenix. before the holidays. Yes, yes. So come grab and go your tickets now. Go to jimjeffries.com. I'll be with him. Um, and then, yeah, uh, I will be um, shadowing Colton Underwood uh, <laughs> until 2022. So I will be featuring for Colton Underwood on the I'm Gay Now tour. Yes. Uh, check your check your uh, local tour. I yeah. also, um, along with being a housewife consultant, I'm going to be a housewife comedian mm, consultant. Mm-hmm. So if there's any real housewives that would like to be a comedian, um, I'm opening myself up to that. And then hopefully, if there's enough of you all from the same franchise pursuing it, they'll ask me to do at least one of the four reunions yeah. to show that you know a person that's similar to yourself is asking questions much like Nicki Minaj. So we're putting it out there in the universe. Heather's yes. also available to do your dark web cabaret as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, Sonia's trying to be a comedian. I forgot. Yeah. Sonia's trying to be a comedian do too. Her, hit her no, up. she really is. She's doing comedy clubs. Oh, it's a Christmas it's miracle. Not, it's called Sonia's Comedy and Friends or something. So Sonia, Tiffany Moon, Katie from The Bachelorette, and Joe Gorga and me. <laughs> What a we're lineup. Going, we're going on tour. <laughs> Originally, I was going to take Justin. <laughs> but Colton Underwood said he was available. Said Colton Underwood. Oh, my God. What a lineup. <laughs> I'll just be waving from the shadows where I belong. Justin, everybody follow Justin Martindale <sighs> on his Instagram. Yeah. And listen to Glitter and Garbage. Glitter and Garbage. It's a great podcast. A lot of people really love it. <sighs> and... um I will see you at the Christmas party. Oh, yeah. Anything could happen. (laughs) I'll light the cigarette.